What's up, guys? Welcome to local band Smokeout. Smokeout. Any genre from, from anywhere in the entire world. I, I want to hear your music. Bam. I think we're ready to go. Ladies and gentlemen, Glass Wipes! Yeah, hell yeah! Yes! No, do me a favor, please uh, properly introduce yourself for some people that may not know who you are. Uh, let me know whereabouts in the world you are. Plug and promote anything and everything. Okay, awesome. So I'm Noah. I'm the vocalist of a band called Glass Waves. Uh, I'm located in Rochester, New York. And definitely go check out our band. And yeah. Hell yeah, I'm here. I'm square. <laughs> Hell yeah. I, I, while doing some research for this, Noah, I noticed that on your guys' YouTube channel, everything was formerly Junexa. Now, I don't know if you get asked that all the time, but is that is that the band's previous name and why the switch to Glass Waves? Yeah, so uh, three members of Junexa, so like me, Owen, and Alec, we used to be in that band and... Um, well, we just kind of thought about like rebranding. We really wanted to change up the sound a lot and just felt like it was like time for a new name. Like let's kill off like our old name. <laughs> and um, so it, it it's kind of like Glass Waves is pretty much a new band. It's completely different. We just kind of swapped over accounts. But it's the same, it's the same members. Yeah, yep. What do you have any like terrible band names that were almost picked before selecting Glass Waves? Like, do you recall we almost named the band like this, this, or this instead? Absolutely. I mean, we had a whole note of just terrible names, <laughs> but uh, I think we ended up with Glass Waves because like it was mentioned one time. I think Alec mentioned it, our guitarist, and then I I like had a dream and. I, I saw this like big banner in the background we were performing and it said glass waves on it. And I was like, dude, that has to be the name. So from a dream? Yeah, partly, yeah. Dude, that is wicked cool. Hell yeah. Uh, I also noticed that uh, Dead Dreams is, I think it's Dead Dreams in particular, takes a lot of lyrical content from Stranger Things. Yeah, there there's a lot of inspiration from Stranger Things in the, that one. I, I think we were all like, we're huge fans of the show and it was what we were watching at the time of writing this. So it kind of like, it was like the visionary of that show inspired the lyrics for this. Yeah. Are you stoked for the, uh, the last season to, to come out and we get the, the conclusion of what happens to 11 and the rest of the crew? Oh, absolutely, dude. I've been dying for it. <laughs> Hell yeah. That is awesome. Uh, yeah. I know that that Glass Waves only has three songs out. What can, what can you tell us about what the band has planned for in 2024 that we can look forward to regarding tours, singles, uh, maybe features in the future? What what can we look forward to? Uh, a lot, to be honest. I mean, we just got back from Atlanta. We were down there writing new music with our producer. So, um, I mean, we, we have a lot of future plans, new music potential features nothing solidified yet but um and then other other than new music just like w we plan on hitting the road we want to be on the road majority of the year so who is the uh the atlanta producer you're talking about and had you worked with them i'm guessing you worked with them multiple times because you you said you, we went back to him blah 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 who is yeah. that that producer yeah so uh that's our friend named justin spaulding he, we worked a lot with him in our old group, Junexa, and uh, he's kind of become like almost like a sixth like ghost member in a way where he, he helps a lot with like the production tricks and like, you know, he helps shapes the, shape the songs in some ways. Hell yeah. What you, what you got going on right here? I, I'm inked up too. What you got going on right here? I tried to do like a little cathedral window. <laughs> Hell yeah. What was blacked out on your knuckles before? Or before? Oh, that, oh okay. That, yeah, that actually says lifeless. So that was um, the EP from Junexa. Okay. Well, that's cool. Yeah. It's a throwback, yeah. throwback memories right there. Um, I'm hoping I'm hoping Sean told you about the hot sauce. But before we get to that, how do you even know Sean? And do you have any history with either Breather or Soul Color? 
Um, so I actually met Sean for the first time. We played in Madison, Wisconsin, I think in October. And he came out to the show, which was uh, super cool. And then um, more recently, he joined our our label, Tough Luck. So we kind of started, we, we were internet friends and then we started like texting back and forth. And that, that's kind of how I got into it with Sean here. And Tough Luck's what, what Matt's yeah. of the Bunny the Bears pro, our side label, right? Yeah, yeah, that's Matt's label. Yeah, Matt's awesome, man. We've had him in the show before, too. He's a super cool guy. Uh, always hustling, always working. So to do the trivia portion of the show, which again involves the hot sauce, can I see the hot sauce that you brought first? Um, So I actually have to go grab hot sauce real quick. Will you give me like one second? Yeah, yeah, go grab it. The hotter you grab is the hotter I will go. And I have about 10 to 12 hot sauces behind me. I don't know if I have very... Uh... I, I don't even know what I have. I'm going to go grab something. Okay, no worries. No worries. All right, thanks, dude. While we're waiting. Oh, we got Alec coming in, too. Okay. I wasn't expecting Alec. Let's see if we can make this work camera view-wise. I think so. Alec, what's up, buddy? How are you here? What's going on, man? We, we were just getting uh, to chatting with Noah right here. He's uh, He went to go grab some uh some hot sauce for the trivia portion of the show i don't know if sean prepped you on that but we do a trivia portion so if you have hot sauce feel free to go grab it i do let me grab that quick oh yeah <laughs> all right cool they're both going to grab it uh i think it's awesome by the way this is a side note when a lot of bands we have on the show for those of you guys who don't know we've done probably close to 800 interviews over the years and almost no bands promote the fact that they're on the show so kudos to Glass Waves, Noah and Alec for, for sharing and telling their fans. And I saw a bunch of people hitting the follow button right before we did this. So that's very cool. Um, so I'm going to try and stump then if we can, we get them to do a swig. Oh, awesome. oh yeah. Same time. Same time. Boys, what'd you, what'd you bring? What'd you bring? Awesome. I've never even seen that before. Roja, Salsa, Takara. The... Fair enough. What you, what you got, Noah? Uh, so I'm going to be honest. Um, I wasn't actually expecting to be at this interview until about like five minutes ago. Okay. And I was not well prepared, but good old Red Hot. That'll work. That'll work. I have a, there's a lot of people that, that come on. They're like, bro, I, I, this is not for me. I, I didn't I didn't know all this was going down. So yeah. it's kudos for you guys for being good sports. Alec, uh, before we do the trivia, because we, we, me and Noah have been talking for a couple minutes, but how did you meet Noah? I'm guessing it came from the previous band. So <laughs> prior to Junexa, how did you meet Noah? We're actually brothers. Oh, so your mama, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. I didn't know that, uh, but that's awesome. So that works out well. Can you guys tell me about uh, every band has like a, a worst show ever? It happens to every band. Everything goes wrong, and uh, you, you've learned from it. But for for advice reasons, can you guys walk me through? Everything went wrong at this particular gig, and how did you learn from it? Yeah, so I think Noah and I are laughing because it's probably the same one. Um, and it was as Junexa. I I won't mention any names, but our, our old guitarist like. Um, did a lot of drugs and, and showed up like totally out of it to this show. And, um, he hadn't had his guitar set up the right way or even stringed and he didn't bring a tuner and it was like everything wrong with the situation that could have possibly happened, happened. And then he got on stage and like, he played the first two songs completely out of tune. And then he started to like tune his guitar, like live in the room by ear while he was plugged into the board <laughs> like in the middle of our set so that was probably the worst one yeah that sounds while the song's extreme. going on he's just sitting there like tuning everything yeah like through the speakers like oh my goodness <laughs> yeah and, and uh i mean he ended up getting really frustrated and just kind of like threw his guitar and walked off stage yeah he threw his guitar at the wall and then left the venue how many more gigs did he play with you guys after that? Zero. <laughs> well, well done. Well done. Hell yeah. So I yeah. brought I brought some uh, some ghostly garlic hot sauce and then some uh, some pilsner infused. But to do the do the trivia portion of the show, you the ball is in your guys' court because you get to pick either a movie 
or TV show, and being that you guys are brothers, I'm sure you can come to agreement on one or the other, either a movie or TV show that you've seen so many times that if I look up trivia on this movie or TV show, there's no way I stump you. If I do stump you, just hit me with a little quick swig, whatever you got. Whether you get it right or wrong, I'm doing hot sauce. <laughs> okay, uh, what show, dude? I don't know. Man, I have a shit memory, so... Um... <laughs> In my opinion, it's any... easier to go the movie route because there's like one movie versus nine or ten uh, seasons of a show. So I think it's kind of easier to go that route, but it's totally your call. I would say like probably adult animation for me. My yeah. my one and a half year old just unlocked the door and walked in. I apologize. One second. Yeah, yeah. No worries. You can't be in no here. No worries. You can't be in here. Yeah. I feel I... like the... If we did like Family Guy or something, I would know I locked pretty the good. door and he figured out how to unlock you it. Need to do Family Guy. Let's do Family Guy. Family Guy. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, so Alec, Noah was saying that, that and I'll look up some Family Guy trivia on the side, but uh, he was saying that you guys recently just went to Atlanta to record with uh, Justin Spaulding. I think you said it was the name. Yeah. Um, yep. do, do we have a timetable on either the next single and or I don't know if this is an EP or an album we're talking, but do we have a timetable on when fans can kind of know more information? Sure. Um, right now it is kind of up in the air because we're involving a second producer as well. And he works closely with like Ice Nine Kills and Motionless and White. And he's been in LA working with Spencer from Ice Nine. I have a guess so, on who it is. Yeah. And so he, um, he, uh, when he gets back, he's supposed to take a look at everything, and then we're going to be collaborating with him a little bit. So the timeline is a little bit foggy right now, but within the next few months, we should we should hopefully have a single ready to go. Are we allowed to know if it is an EP or album? Or just yeah, singles? Yeah, it, it'll be the start of an EP. It'll all be released as singles, but it's it's all going to be part of like the same collective idea that makes up an EP. Okay, cool. Hell yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, you guys said Family Guy is something that you've seen, you know, a million times. Let's see if we can stuff you in some Family Guy trivia. <laughs> and now it starts hard, because you said this is what you've seen more than anything. So I always start with a really hard one and then judge where to go from there. In Family Guy, do you know the name of Brian Griffin's mom? God, no. <laughs> She ends up getting stuffed. It says she became stuffed and then a table. She becomes a table. I yeah, I, re I remember the, the stuffed dog, but I can't think of her name. So that's a stump. There we go. Yeah, all right. So Their I, name I is Biscuit, Biscuit Griffin. Enjoy, Biscuit. enjoy the hot sauce and we'll, we'll all suffer together. Is there is there some some West Coast plans in 2024? Please tell me that there's some West Coast plans. Nothing solid yet, but we're I'm we're trying to pair up with a new booking agent and 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 start getting out there like that. So hopefully, hopefully by the new year next year there will be some West Coast stuff going on. Chat earlier asked a question. If you guys don't mind, I'm I take a couple of chat questions. That's why I like to do these live. Yeah. Um, who is the most annoying person in the band and or has the worst habit? Habit. Well, Noah never puts down a vape ever. What is that? <laughs> I mean, I got, a, I got a vape right here, so I'm... I mean, we're all kind of annoying in different ways. Yeah. Um, most annoying, though. Man. Depends uh, on the we... moment. What did you say? I said Owen. <laughs> Why? No particular reason. He's just kind of annoying. <laughs> do you have any? Do you have any? Um, we're we're time to. It's time to go and do a run. Let's say you're going like you're you're gonna play shows from New York all the way to Atlanta and all the way back down and up. Is there is there some essentials that you you have to bring beyond like the normal like underwear, change of clothes? baby wipe, stuff like that. What are some essentials you have to bring uh, for you personally? Uh, I mean, for me, it's got to be 
the vape and then liquor honestly what kind of liquor what what, what, what we what we're drinking on i mean I, i'm broke so i mostly stick to jack and coke and cool. then, but um yeah it, it saves you a lot of money at the venues if you bring your own this is true this is a valid point for me it's not for me, it's it's not. I wouldn't say it's something I bring, but it's uh like anytime I see a Bucky's, I stop. Typically, I've never seen a Bucky's ever in my whole life. I'm from Florida originally, and now I live in California. I've never seen a Bucky's. Yeah, they're they're pretty sick. I've heard <laughs> it's, it's like it's like a Walmart gas station. Yeah, it's huge. It's like massive and has like insane insane amounts of stuff to to choose from in there, and it's like all their own stuff. So you you go, Bucky's, you go snacks, in and grab Bucky's like sandwiches. like jerky or what do you what do you grab it on that stuff? Uh yeah, there's jerky. They do like these brisket sandwiches. They they That's have cool. like these like candied nuts, like stuff like that. That's cool. Uh, do you yeah, guys do you guys have any any phobias or anything that freaks you out? Stuff that you're just you just you know you, you see this and you just run to the other side of the room. Um, for me. Like in context of like the, the band or just in general? Just in general, like like me personally, I'm afraid of heights. I'll go on roller coasters, but like if I'm on like a roof and someone's like, oh, do you see that guy like way down there? I'll be like barely looking over the edge because I get freaked out. I don't like bees. Yeah, bees are bastards. Yeah, bees. I, get, I, get, I get freaked out by bees for sure. Are you allergic? No. <laughs> okay. I just hate them. <laughs> <laughs> What you got, Noah? Um, I guess it's part of the reason I like Bucky so much. Uh, public restrooms. Oh damn! They got a badass restroom there. Oh yeah, it's like clean as hell. Okay, yeah, that's cool. like part. Of, that's like part of their whole thing. <laughs> oh, so it's like it's like it doubles as like a trucker stop with like a shower and stuff too. I'm guessing. No, that's the weird thing. They don't allow trucks. Oh, weird. Yeah, they're not like trucks are not even allowed like to pull in there, which has like been the root of a bunch of controversy. But yeah, no, there's no showers, but they have like the world's cleanest bathrooms and the stalls are like huge. It's like a full closet door. It's like a whole bathroom like in a stall. So if you got to take a sh and stop at Bucky's, heard. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is this question goes to both of you guys and it's it's uh, I would like you to answer separately obviously, but who made you want to be a musician like can you recall when you were when you were yay high tall and an example like no you you heard or you went to your first concert and and you saw this artist and you, you wanted to pick up a microphone or whatever the case may be like yeah. what artist made you want to be what, what you do so i mean really early on i can remember being like i don't know like four or five and for some reason i loved the song bad to the bone so much and I would constantly ask for that to be played. And so it was like kind of like radio rock a little bit at first. And then I got into like Papa Roach a lot and later on like more emo shit. So it's like a lot of different types of artists that like made me want to pursue music. I feel like as far back as I can remember, that that's kind of what I've always wanted to do. Before Alec answers, do you remember the first concert you ever attended? The first one I remember is Coheed and Cambria. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a pretty good first one. Al, oh, yeah. what, what would you say? So for me, I would say, like, um, I didn't really think about, like, music or, like, being in a band until I was probably 13 or 14. And um, a lot of what did it for me was, like, the combination. I was just obsessed with music when I was in high school, but also, like, Guitar Hero was, like, a big thing when I was in high school and um, like just being obsessed with the game made me want to like do it for real. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it was that. And then, yeah, I got into like the style of music through stuff like Lincoln Park and um, A Day to Remember early on, stuff like that. You know, Lincoln Park's dropping a new song tomorrow. It's either tonight or tomorrow. No, I, I didn't know that. That's it's, cool. It's either tonight or tomorrow. It's from the Catalyst Sessions and the song's called Friendly Fire. Just if you're a big Lincoln Park fan, make note of that. But um, do you recall the first brand of guitar that you bought, Alec? After Guitar Hero, yeah. after, after Expert Level? Uh, my dad got me a, it was like just a Squire Strat when I was like 13. That was my first one. Do you still own it or have you 
sold it off since then? Uh, I, I think so. I don't know where it is, though. For sure. <laughs> Well, let, let's go ahead and see if we can stump you one more time on some Family Guy trivia. Here we go. He <laughs> said, I'm getting her ready. because, you know, yeah, yeah, you never know. All right. In Family Guy, on Peter and Lois's anniversary, their one-year anniversary, can you tell me what Peter gives as a gift last minute to Lois? It is a very not normal gift. As expected. You got any ideas, I Noah? That. And I don't know. It, it's going to be something like ridiculous, like it's a straight cat or something. It's a hundred percent ridiculous. It's a. I'll tell you. I'll give you a hint. It's a body part. Oh, a toe. <laughs> You're close. It is. That's a stump. It is his thumb. His thumb. <laughs> <laughs> Which makes no Who's sense because he, he got his all he got all his appendages in future episodes. I don't know. But that's the family guy trivia. I'm gonna switch to ghostly garlic <laughs> hot sauce. Ghostly garlic hot sauce. Take a swig. Oh. Woo! Tell me why you have to play this country. As it's like you're, you're, you know, like let's say you have a, a globe at home. You've, you've sharpied. I'm on fire. You've sharpied this particular country. Where do you guys want to play more than anywhere in the entire world? Probably think, Australia. Mm. For me. I want to visit there more than anywhere else. What yeah, you probably say, Australia. Alex? Probably Australia or like London or something. Do you have connections out there, or is that just like? Uh, somewhere you've always wanted to visit slash play um we, we got invited on like a little tour in england one time we couldn't make it happen because of finances but uh i would if that opportunity ever arises again i would definitely love to do that i imagine that opportunity will will arise again because you guys you guys are badass man and you're doing everything right so i'm sure it's coming by the way i don't know why it doesn't say following here now it does should have but um <clears throat> Can you guys uh, describe or just give me some advice of of a mistake maybe you made in Junexa prior to Glass Waves or in Glass Waves that you just don't want a local band that's just now starting up to make? Maybe you invested in something wrong or you went a route that you you tell your homies bands like, don't do this. We made this mistake. I would say like probably just like... Um... Like don't like don't get ahead of yourself. I think we tried to do so many different things as Junexa before. Like it's weird because it's like you really don't understand where you're at until you're like ahead of where you were, if that makes sense. Yeah. So it's like we we like hired a manager and went on these went on a tour, like a national tour, and then like and like those things greatly contributed to like understanding the way that those things worked and it helped provide perspective. But like at the same time, I really don't think we were ready to do those things yet. And we spent w so much money doing them that like, I wish we had held off and like worked on getting other things right before we took those leaps. Does that mean like financially, like having enough merch, uh, getting, asking for correct, like guarantees on the tour? Like, can you elaborate just a little bit? Yeah, definitely guarantees is a big part of it. I, I don't think like a lot of um, like local bands that haven't done any touring really understand how that stuff works. Um, but like touring without a booking agent is really tough, especially if there is no guarantee. Um, we didn't, we had a guarantee, but it was very small. <clears throat> and so what I mean in terms of finance is like traveling all over the United States in a rental van and paying for gas. And yeah, obviously the merch too, it, it was very expensive and the shows weren't really well attended. Um, which is just some, sometimes how it goes. It was, this was right on the tail end of COVID. So stuff was still kind of weird. Um, and unpredictable. So, yeah, it was it was like a really expensive endeavor. And like I said, we got a lot of experience from it, and we we kind of learned like the way that things work. Um, and I, I mean, I I've done a lot a bunch of touring since then, and and learned even more. But like I I like don't think we were ready to do it at the time that we did it. Yeah. We didn't have our online presence figured out completely. We didn't have our songwriting figured out completely. Um, and to like lo local bands that are trying to like really like 
step up their game in the industry. Like we also didn't pay enough attention to TikTok, and that's probably that's probably like the most important thing right now. Yeah. I've heard a lot of people say that like TikTok is is the future. If you can capture on that, it kind of like feeds over into everything else naturally. Exactly, because you wouldn't like part part of it is like just the the reach of TikTok itself is much better than in, any other social media that I that I work on right now. Um, but I, even more so than that, what what ends up happening is like the data on TikTok is already sorted so well. Like their algorithm is so good. Like you know bands you like are going to come up just because you listen to similar bands on TikTok. And what ends up happening is the reach is so good that that happens over and over and over and over again. And what ends up happening is the data on Spotify starts to match the same data as TikTok. So you'll start appearing on the playlist that other bands big on TikTok are appearing on, and it all starts to feed into each other over and over and over again. Oh, that's badass. I didn't know that. Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, a couple more questions, and, I'll, and then we'll let you guys go. And I appreciate you so much for for taking some time out of your day to do this. Can we can we go through? It's it's ten minutes before we step on stage. What are the warm ups vocally? Maybe you're just clean style, just pick sweeping. I don't know. Maybe there's a, a giant like prayer kumbaya thing. What do you guys do prior to stepping on the stage? And then also post question after the show is over. Now it's time to party and celebrate. I know some Jack and Coke is involved, but beyond that. I mean, for, for me, it, I, I don't know. It's kind of strange. I don't really do much prior to a show. Like, I do vocal warm-ups and things like that. But, like, as soon as I, like, step on the stage, I swear, like, a uh, like rush of adrenaline comes over me, and I'm just, like, hyped as hell. But up until I literally step, like, on stage in front of those lights, I'm, like, completely normal when you say vocal warm-ups is there a particular per sorry is there a particular person that you do like like a melissa cross run through or is it just kind of your own thing that you that you've evolved yeah so i, I actually learned a lot of my vocal warm-ups uh through melissa cross and i've kind of and other vocal coaches over time i've kind of combined them and then, that's cool i mean whatever yeah. works works it's, it's working so keep doing it <laughs> and the same for, question for, for you, Alec. Yeah, so for me, I'll usually run, um, I'll usually run some song on guitar, usually something that moves around a lot, so, so to to get warmed up. Um, there's like old Junexa songs that I'll play just to get my fingers moving, and then I I do have the occasional Jack and Coke before stage. <laughs> just one. Yeah. This is one, two, two. If it's you know the ten thousand deep, louder than life fest or something like that, we did we did two that day. <laughs> All right, yeah. a couple of fun questions before I let you guys go. Uh, are you guys cannabis users? What's that? Can are yeah. you guys cannabis users? I'm not, but I don't like, know. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. We'll just you know some a lot of weed involved in this show, so Smoke weed every day. I like to ask that and just and just see. <laughs> Um, hell yeah. Is there, is there anything that we maybe didn't discuss that you, that you think we should talk about real quick before we let you guys go? Something that maybe coming up, uh, uh, an announcement, uh, a concert, anything that you'd like to bring up? Yeah, de definitely. So, I mean, we'll have a new song coming out soonish. <laughs> I'd say probably within the next couple of months, maybe. <laughs> But um, yeah, and then just other show announcements coming up. We well, got yeah. There, there's a tour in March in the Midwest. So if you live in the Midwest, uh, we're hitting Madison, Milwaukee, Chicago, and a couple other places. Yeah. Um, that's going on. We'll have some more touring announcements coming up soon as well. So some stuff solidified. This is not announced yet. Yeah, for sure. That is awesome. Well, I'm excited. My fingers are crossed that there's a there's a SoCal West Coast date in there somewhere in the near future. I hope that you guys are able to eventually get to the UK and also over to Australia and just just shred some faces. That'd be awesome. I'm excited about the new single. I'm sure Justin Justin Spalding, the man, the myth, the legend of Atlanta, is gonna you know give us everything we need on those new singles and. Uh, hopefully, we get that EP or full length before the end of 2024. That'd be amazing. But uh, I'm 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 proud that I was able to stump you guys twice today on some Family Guy trivia. Not that doesn't always go so well for me 
during the show. Sometimes uh, people know the answers, and uh, yeah. I'm glad we got to do some hot sauce. You guys are good sports, man. I, I'm I'm happy that Sean was able to set this up for us. This is fun. Yeah, thanks, yeah, sir. thanks Sean. If you're watching, thanks. <laughs> is it okay with you guys if I put this on YouTube tomorrow and tag you on some stuff? Yeah, yeah, sure. Hell yeah. Well, fellas, I appreciate you. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Again, thank you so much for doing this. Alec and Noah of Glass Wipes! Yeah, hell yeah. Thanks, man. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Cheers, boys. Thank you again. I appreciate it. Yeah, see you later.